Right, so, so the main issue with the Opera House and, and the reason we're doing all this work uh, is because it's earthquake prone. One of the issues is that it's built out of brick, so it's an unreinforced masonry building. Uh, means that in earthquake, bricks tend to wobble around, pop out, building collapses. The other big issue is that there's no connection between uh, the northern wall and the main southern wall. So those walls would operate independently in an earthquake, meaning that the collapse risk is a lot higher than if they were connected. So the main work from a strengthening perspective is to do something with the unreinforced masonry brick and install the, the diaphragms throughout all the levels of the building up into the roof level. That's a shear wall, a new shear wall. So behind the shear wall sits the old brick wall. So that's still in place. Um, steel gets pulled up all the way to the roof. And then section by section, this, these new walls are poured, um, plastered and painted. So we've got basically seven shear walls coming up from this space all the way uh, to the eaves. But obviously this brick, double brick wall that was here was sitting on a foundation that was about that wide. Because we were adding all the steel and cement, we had, the first thing we had to do was break out the foundations. So we had to break out this part of the floor and 750 mils out into the footpath to create the new foundation to actually carry the weight of this new wall. So all the work starts in the ground and there's a big cost in the ground that you don't see. So for example, for this shear wall, we had to cut out 250 mils of stairs to be able to get the steel in and to be able to pour it. So this, this stairwell is 250 mils less wide than it used to be. So this is an unreinforced masonry wall. That's what that looks like. Uh, luckily, we don't have to put shear walls on all the unreinforced masonry walls. Uh, for this one, we only had to do this side, and this one is just gonna stay as it was. So we're now on the first level with our shear walls. So when I was talking about the steel, that's what it looks like. So that goes in first, then it gets tied back to the brick, and then we use shutters. Once the steel, steel's in position, that is connected to the steel with a 250 mil gap and we pour the concrete behind here. Once the concrete's cured, you unbolt it, get a water blaster out, water blaster, and you can use it again. So th th the, this is a far more sustainable way of doing it than it would be if you use plywood. Uh, when we pour shear walls, we pour them in just over two meter height uh, and we let them dry for about two weeks. And then you can take the shuttering away, build your next layer, and pump it up again. The walls that have got all the steel and got the shear walls, those are the, the walls that carry the load in the building. So those are the walls that you need to strengthen. Shear walls need to be all connected. You can't have a shear wall going up to the eaves but not being connected, so it needs to be one continuous wall. So you can see that we had to break out all the ceiling and floors to get that steel running all the way up. And the challenge here is to get the concrete up here. So the way we do that is use big hoses and big pumps and pump it up. We've got 80 trucks worth of concrete in this building now. Uh, but the other thing that we need to do, and I talked talk to you about not having connections between the northern and the southern wall, so those diaphragms that are going in, one of the diaphragms has to go into this space, a floor diaphragm. Uh, but as you can see, it's full of mechanical plant. Um, that is really hard to dismantle and put together again. So we thought long and hard about how we're going to do that. And we are actually going to push this through that gap to get it out of the way uh, and then lift it and then put the ply diaphragm down and then pull it back in and drop it down again instead of having to dismantle the whole thing. So all this, this shear wall construction, that's, all crit that's what project managers call on the critical path. So this work is the only component that actually determines the length of the project. Um, so it's really important, I think, that people understand the amount of work associated with doing this and how um, you can only do it in certain steps um, because you can't pour, you, you know, you, you couldn't pour a shear wall from the ground to the floor in one hit. That would never work. So you have to do it in two metre jumps. So that's why it takes 24 months, just because of this. This determines how quick this project can be done.